talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris Magruder. Catholic Women Now is underwritten by Vermar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Welcome to Catholic Women Now this morning, and we welcome you around the Catholic Women Coffee Table here with our red and white checkered tablecloth. And, and you got a little co- coffee stain on it today, Julie. I did, I did. Well, I'll have to wipe that up. I'll take it home and wash it, right? <laughs> I have the best spot remover. Is that how women talk? <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, we got a great guest on, our friend Barbara Hiles, back with us today. She is a speaker at the Catholic Women's, um, uh, Iowa Catholic Radio Women's Conference coming up October 30th. And she was recently one of four lay speakers at the World Eucharistic Congress being held in Budapest. Mm. So we want to hear about how the church is globally, because we don't get that perspective, and her experiences, Mm -hmm. just the 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 behind the scene experiences that happen. We, in we those were talking about how listeners how we were so blessed to be a friend of Barbara Heil and how we've been friends with her. Kind of ran into her through Kelly Walquist years ago, and so here we are in studio again. We're always so happy and joyful and filled with the Holy Spirit by the time she leaves us. So we're we're so happy to be here with her. Should we start with the Hail Mary, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But before, we need to give some announcements, and I have one that I'm really excited about. Yeah, Can go I ahead. share? Yeah, go ahead. David Curry, who is the author of Born Fundamentalist, Born Again Catholic, who we had on our show about a month ago or so. Last spring. Last, <laughs> oh, oh, has it been that long ago? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, he tells his amazing conversion story, and he is going to be at St. Augustine's this coming Sunday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You can... Go and you can hear him, and then you can still go have your wonderful Sunday dinner afterward. But we, he suggested to us that you bring um, a Protestant friend or somebody who um, wants to learn more about their Catholic faith, if they even if they're Catholic, because you will learn so much in just the little bit of time that you hear him speak. And he's interesting. He's lovely. Strong, wonderful man. Strong he's, Catholic. He's a gifted teacher. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, October is Pro-Life Month, and at Iowa Catholic Radio is hosting a diaper drive for Intervisions Healthcare at Iowa Catholic Radio's new offices, 1355 50th Street, Suite 500 in West Des Moines. Diapers of all sizes are needed, and you can drop off the new package of diapers during business hours, 8 to 4, Monday through Friday, and check out our new office space over there in the chapel. That's right. And also save the date for Iowa Catholic Radio's dinner in December, Saturday, December 11th, at the Embassy Suites downtown with speaker Paul Zuccarelli, who's going to tell us about his near-death experience, which will be so interesting. I've heard a little bit about it. And speaking of Embassy Suites, what else do we have coming up? October 30th. Iowa Catholic Radio Women's Conference. Yes, yes. And Barbara Heil is going to be one of our speakers. Along with Dr. Kathleen Beckman and Tim Jamison. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a powerhouse. And we're going to have prayer teams there Mm -hmm. for uh, people who would like to have a little more prayer. And Mm -hmm. and we all need prayer, right? In some way. Yeah. I think between four and five that day is when Mm -hmm. prayers are going to be happening. So that's right. So, hey, men, you're getting together again at the Man Up West Power Lunch, Friday, November 12th, noon at St. Francis of Assisi Parish in West. Des Moines. And this month's uh, featured speaker is Johnny Carlson. He's the Oop Feedum Coordinator at Dowling Catholic High School. Lunch is provided by the West Des Moines Chick-fil-A on University. Yeah, I think so. I heard Bud Marr the other day saying John Carson. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's not Johnny Carson. He'd be having to come back to life. And <laughs> it's Johnny Carlson. Yeah, Johnny Carlson. Yeah. I wonder if he gets that a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, he, he probably, probably doesn't, doesn't even know who he is. <laughs> that's what I was just going to say. He probably doesn't even know who he is. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you're listening to Catholic Women Now on Iowa Catholic Radio. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will be talking to Barbara Heil about the Eucharistic Conference in Budapest, Hungary. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts at the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics, Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you online at mercydesmoines.org.
Ladies, please join us for our women's conference, Spiritual Protection for Such a Time as This, hosted by Iowa Catholic Radio on Saturday, October 30th at the Embassy Suites downtown. The conference begins with Mass, followed by powerful national and local speakers who will give you the tools to spiritually protect yourself and your families. For more information and to register, go to iowacatholicradio.com or call 515-223-1150. Mary's Meals provides hope in the form of one good meal to over 2 million of the world's poorest children every school day. Learn more about Mary's Meals at marysmealsusa.org. Mary's Meals, a simple solution to world hunger. marysmealsusa.org. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company. They specialize in residential re-roofs like commercial jobs. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. Bell Construction. Thank you, Golden Rule Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, for sponsoring my show. John Lee and Eddie in the Morning on Iowa Catholic Radio. Golden Rule, servicing Des Moines for over 15 years. They obey the rules to live by, especially the Golden Rule. Online at goldenrulephc.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, a Catholic-owned family business providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Well, welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. We're delighted to welcome in our guest today, Barbara Heil. She's a Catholic speaker and evangelist and convert to the Catholic faith. She's served as a missionary to over 60 countries as a Pentecostal minister, and in 2013, she was received into the Catholic Church. After being widowed for eight years, Barbara recently married Jeff Heil. She has four children and three grandchildren, and between the two of them, they have eight children and ten grandchildren, or eleven grandchildren now. Eleven. And uh, Barbara is enjoying her new life of living on a farm near Marshalltown, (laughs) Iowa. (laughs) Barbara has a full-time ministry called FromHisHeart.com, where you can find opportunities to sign up for her Freedom School, Discipleship Training, and Mission Service. Book Barbara as a speaker for your next parish or retreat. Welcome, Barbara, to the show. Thank you. I'm so thrilled to be here. Well, you recently took a big trip over the the pond, so to speak, to Budapest, and was one of four lay speakers at the World Eucharistic Congress. I was. And one of two women, right? Only two women. There were about, I'm going to say there were a minimum of 13 cardinals there, Mm -hmm. and about 60 bishops and archbishops from around the world were there. Only four lay speakers in the entire program, only two women out of all of those those speakers. And I, I will be honest with you, I, before I went, I had no idea the scope of this thing that I was going to. It was scheduled <laughs> for last year, and it was postponed till this year. And I thought they were going to call it again. I thought, oh, they're going to do a Zoom meeting instead. No, we went live. And um, it was amazing. I this was, was, this it was, was a exciting. first Catholic experience for you then, too, going to a World Eucharistic Congress. I had never been to a yeah, Eucharistic so Congress anywhere. First. Yeah. So I had no idea. But I was prepared. I had looked at, at the program and everything. And before I left, I, I was really looking at everything going, wow, this, this looks amazing. And I want to tell you, I got there and I was actually, first, I felt really honored to be there mm-hmm. uh, and amazed and just everything. And secondly, to, see, to be there with the bishops, because we were VIPs, we were on the speaking, you know, on the schedule to speak. We were with the bishops and the cardinals all the time. Mm-hmm. So we're on the bus with them. We're chit-chatting with them. We're in the elevators with them. We're all staying together. We're eating meals with them. And I want to tell you, it just really ministered to my soul because I saw the love of, for God that these men had. Mm. Because, you know, they weren't there always speaking. A lot of it, a lot of downtime, a lot of sitting in meetings, just enjoying a meal, Um watching their delight at having a police escort to the meetings. But these were men of faith. Mm. And one of the archbishops in particular, and I believe he was the archbishop from Luxembourg, when he got up to tell his testimony about being imprisoned during the Soviet era and how he stayed feeding his soul with Christ when he couldn't have the Eucharist, and and just to hear that story and the tears that would come to his eyes, it's it's this is a man of deep faith. Sometimes, and some of our listeners may have 
encountered this. Sometimes there's so much in Christian media, Catholic media in the United States that can be negative. Yes. And sometimes we think, oh, the church. I want to tell you, the church is alive and well. Yay. And yeah. 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 we're clapping. You know, it's, it's, it, we, don't, we don't see the global. We don't see the universal worldwide church. You got to see that at this conference. Mm. I did. I met the, the um, uh, cardinal from the Philippines, on fire for God, uh, wants souls to come to Jesus, is impassioned, found out I was from the United States, found out I was a former Pentecostal. After he heard my talk, he comes up to me and he says, can you tell, can you give us tips on how to evangelize? <laughs> so like the Pentecostals do. Uh, and so this, you so know, you're going to do a mission trip to the Philippines? Well, <laughs> you know, but just the hunger. And so we have to be careful because a lot of times in the media, even Catholic media, you're getting one side. You're getting somebody's view. You're mm-hmm. not getting the whole picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just, I was stunned. I, it was, these are marvelous men that are trying their best, that are walking in the revelation that they have, in the in and in the faith that they have, and really amazing. One of the other archbishops that was sharing that was from Eastern Europe. He had to he had to study for the priesthood in secret, mm-hmm. and he shared about that talking uh, they talking about loving God, falling in love with Jesus as a student. Soviet times, having to go underground, becoming a priest underground, and being resilient and staying with it, and just his love and passion for God, and that his people walk in the New Testament realities of the kingdom of God that Jesus brings us. And I just, I just thought, you no, know, when you, you say the New Testament this. realities, what do you mean? Share with us what you mean by New Testament realities. What it- the New Testament realities, Jesus brings us the kingdom of heaven on earth. The re- I don't live in the Old Testament anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Old Testament was foreshadowing what was going to come in the New Covenant in the New Testament. So when Jesus comes, he brings us the kingdom of heaven so I can walk with God right here on, on earth. earth. Right. On earth as it is in heaven. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I have to back up. You said something about another one of the cardinals that was speaking, and he talked about how he kept the Eucharist alive in his heart when he couldn't receive it. How did he do that in a practical sense? Because there are a lot of people going, I could be in jail at some point because I love the Eucharist, because I'm not going to do this or that. I'm going to stand up with God. I could be in jail, but I might not get to receive the Eucharist. How do I keep him alive in me? How did he do it? He understood. He ha- he understood that he was the temple of the Holy Spirit, mm. and that Jesus lives in him. We have to understand we are the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus resides in us. And he would eat of his relationship with the Lord. Mm. So for me, this was so exciting to uh, hear their stories, um, even on the bus, a lot of chit chat on the bus, and you know, just getting to know each other and hear them talk about their passions and and the things they've done and seen. And to see this faith that leaders of the church have this deep faith, and they've gone through things. That's right. They've had an experience. They've had deep experiences. And one of the others that really, really spoke to me, one of the main speakers was uh, from Montreal. The Cardinal from Montreal shared his testimony uh, in the public sessions. And he started as a parish priest in Colombia during the drug wars, his it, it, up way up in the mountains, mm-hmm. and his neighboring priest at the next village was martyred, was murdered because he was, you know, wanting the kids not to do drugs, not to grow the drugs, not to sell the drugs, and he was martyred. So this is a cardinal up in Canada that had lived through that as a parish priest, mm-hmm. and just his story and his reliance on God, his reliance on his faith, his reliance uh, on building his house on the rock. It just was, it was, it did my heart good to hear these stories and see these men. And I also have to say, uh, Dr. Mary Healy was one of the other presenters, and then she did one of the general sessions, the only woman that spoke in the general sessions. I just did a breakout session, and I Praise God that I had that opportunity. But Dr. Mary Healy had one of the main sessions in the in the general plenary session, I should say. And when she invited everybody to pray, I watched 
bishops and cardinals and archbishops and the 5,000 people that were gathered there for that particular uh, meeting, you know, lift their hands and pray, close their eyes and pray. And of course they would. Mm-hmm. Of course they would. Mm-hmm. But as a Westerner who gets a steady diet of crazy news all the time, and sometimes even from Catholic sources, okay, we have to remember the enemy comes to discourage, to kill, steal, and destroy, and also to sow division. And what I saw, it was really beautiful. Mm-hmm. It amazed me, mm-hmm. in fact. Oh, this is so good to hear. It is so good to hear for us out here in the cheap sh- seats to know that this is going on <laughs> in the world in our church, because these are bishops I've never heard of. Mm-hmm. I mean, when mm-hmm. you were talking about this, like Bishop of Luxembourg, mm-hmm. I've never heard of him before. Mm-hmm. That's a, you know, truly amazing to get... Those stories need to get out. Well, also the bishops from Africa on fire, but they also, we have to remember Nigeria. I mean, just last week, seminarians were kidnapped and there's martyrdoms going Mm -hmm. on every Mm -hmm. single day where our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ are laying down their lives for the gospel. And there are bishops and archbishops and cardinals around the world that their parish is under severe attack. We we have a we have a luxury life compared to the rest of the world. So it was just a reminder of the the global scope of mm-hmm. our church mm-hmm. and the richness of our our tradition and our theology that these men have sunk their roots so deeply and they've stayed firm. They know and, Jesus. They don't they know, know about him. They exactly, know him. Exactly. Mm. And this was a group of, of uh, bishops, archbishops, and cardinals that were very, I have to say it, they were conservative. Mm-hmm. They were, they, you know, just were preaching the gospel, mm-hmm. preaching the teachings of the church. And it it just really encouraged my soul, spoke to me so deeply. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Barbara, we're going to keep you here for the second chat that we have coming up. But listeners, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll speak more to Barbara about her experience at the Eucharistic Congress in Budapest, Hungary, right? I almost said Germany for some reason. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) you're listening to Catholic Women Now on Iowa Catholic Radio. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts at the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics. Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you. Online at mercydesmoines.org. Since 1924, St. Vincent de Paul has been helping those less fortunate work towards self-sufficiency. Last year, St. Vincent de Paul helped over 20,000 individuals with food, clothing, and shelter, while also offering classes in financial literacy, high school completion, career readiness, and prisoner re-entry. SVDPDSM.org, 515-282-8327. Shop, donate, volunteer, serve. This message was brought to you by Homemakers Furniture. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Ladies, please join us for our Women's Conference, Spiritual Protection for Such a Time as This, hosted by Iowa Catholic Radio on Saturday, October 30th at the Embassy Suites downtown. The conference begins with Mass, followed by powerful national and local speakers who will give you the tools to spiritually protect yourself and your families. For more information and to register, go to iowacatholicradio.com or call 515-223-1150. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio, where we have been visiting with our guest, Barbara Heil, about her experience at the World Eucharistic Congress in Budapest held in late August. So, Barbara, you did some um, fun things. They had you do some things outside of the conference. So why don't you share some of those experiences with us? Yes. um, Archbishop, I'm sorry, Cardinal Erdo had invited several of us to come and do evangelization 
as a mission from the Eucharistic Congress. He wanted to evangelize his city. He wanted to evangelize. On the streets. On the streets. He wanted to evangelize Budapest on the streets. So the Congress paid for two platforms to be set up, one at a train station, one at a bus station. Wow. And they trained teams. And these were people that are very filled with the Spirit, very filled with the Word of God. Uh, they pray together. And Bishop Erdo asked that community to head this up. And I was invited as one of the speakers. So I got to speak at both venues. And literally, I'm standing on a train station with a Catholic evangelistic group on this platform, fabulous music. I've got the microphone, and we just went for it. Uh, we, we, asked, we preached the gospel, told testimonies, had words of knowledge for things that God wanted to heal. You have to imagine this now. We're at the train station in Budapest. People are running by to catch a train, mm-hmm. or they're getting off the train and running mm. to go home or get to work. <laughs> so you only have them for like five minutes. And yes, there's there's a lot of people standing there. There's probably about a thousand people standing, just waiting, just, just mm-hmm. standing there, mm-hmm. and uh, and plus the team. And we had so many literal miracles that happened. Like? We prayed for people, people who arms that were had issues with the mm-hmm. arms. For mm-hmm. me, it was things with the back. Mm-hmm. It was things with migraine headache. Mm-hmm. The lady comes up to me later. She says, I still have no headache. I can't believe it. I was on my way home on the train because I, the migraine had started. I needed to go home. I was standing there. I heard you say there's somebody standing here right now that has a migraine headache. Uh-huh. She said, I didn't even raise my hand, <laughs> but you prayed for those that had migraine headaches. And she said, it has gone away and it has not come back. Oh, no. she says, and she said, I'm not going home. Stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Also asking, how many of you would like to surrender your life to Christ? Yes. To actually walk with him, to return to the church? Mm. Many, many hands, multiple times, both locations. It was amazing. Mm. And I just was so thankful that Cardinal Erdo, that this was his heart to evangelize his own city during the Eucharistic Congress as an outreach of the Congress, Mm -hmm. and to just see the church doing the stuff from the book of Acts and the stuff that Jesus has equipped us to do Mm -hmm. by his Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I think here in the West, we're kind of amazed that people would just turn around that quickly. You'd say, you want to know Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that's I think that's the thing that we don't understand here in the West is so much in our church today in America. Well, and what I'm surprised it's, about, I have actually I had two men in my house bringing in a new piece of furniture recently. And I was at a restaurant recently and I, I wanted to pray for them. And I said, can I pray for you? And I asked them before I started to pray, I said, do you know Jesus? And all three of those men in these different locations said, yes, I do. And all of a sudden, it's like their head went down ready to be blessed. And pray. And I was like, it's just amazing. We don't realize how many people do know Jesus, and we just have to step out and, and I know. Bless I them. recently had similar experiences. And the interesting thing is, is they're just so appreciative. They're like, oh, yes. Oh, there's, but that's what we should be doing is encouraging people when we're praying with them, encouraging and yes. edifying and lifting yes. up the church. Yes. So this is normal Catholic life. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. When we look at the book of Acts, look back, Acts is still unfolding. Mm-hmm. The church is still here with the same commissioning. You finish Mass, go forth and declare the good news. You're take, the, taking Jesus with you. We're the next him. chapter of Acts, aren't we? Exactly. So we're the Acts 29 that Father Ricardo exactly. talked about. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And this is normal Catholic life. So when we live our normal Catholic life, we're, we're always in the kingdom. We're always with Christ. Mm -hmm. I don't leave him when I leave adoration. Christ is with me, and he's in me, and he goes with me. And if we lean in and listen, we'll hear the still, small voice of the Lord directing us, Mm -hmm. giving us those Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. nudges. Mm -hmm. And that happened a lot during the Congress in Hungary. I will tell you, we had the opportunity to pray for many bishops and archbishops who were all too happy to have somebody to pray for them about their health and about their needs. Yes. And I looked at them, I said, these are these are men first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These are mm-hmm. men first mm-hmm. who have given their lives for the church mm-hmm. and they still ha- they have needs, they have hungers, they have uh, holy desires and they're so to just be able to pray with them and bless them and, and listen to the nudges of the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit in that setting. I was flying. I didn't need a plane when I came home. (laughs) I was flying. I have to tell you also, while I was in Budapest, they ended the Congress with adoration. 
And the night before, Pope Francis flew in. And I chose to go to Adoration instead of to the opera. And I got there, and it was at St. Stephen's Church in St. Stephen's Square. Really amazing building. I was stunned. It was filled with young people. I would say there was three, at least 3,000, maybe 3,500 young people who knelt most of the time on those marble floors for four hours of an adoration service. And the songs, I will tell you, the worship was so beautiful. And it was led by the Spirit-filled community in Budapest. It was amazing to see those young people pouring out their hearts in adoration. I want to tell you, the church is alive and well. Yes. 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 Amen. Praise Jesus. Okay, well, wow, we're bumping up against the clock yeah. here, and we we need to say thank you, Barbara, so much. If you stay with us, we'd love for you to do our closing prayer. All right. All right. So, Barbara Heil, speaker at the Iowa Catholic Women's Conference, October 30th. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women now provided in part by Permar Security, Catholic-owned family business providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, online at permarsecurity.com. Barbara, would you close us in a prayer, please? Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your life that is poured out to us and through us. And Lord, we just give you our bodies, our lives, our hands, and our feet. We ask you to speak through us, through our neighbors, through our community. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise today. Lord, bless the listeners today. Lord, empower us with your love to go out and change the world. And we ask all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, Iowa Catholic Radio Rosary is going to be coming up next, so stay tuned. One of the most powerful prayers you can say. It's also prayed at 6 o'clock a.m. as well, so stay tuned, especially if you're an early riser. Please consider supporting Iowa Catholic Radio by maybe talking to your employer about an employer match. Matching gifts are available with many organizations. And thank you for listening to Iowa Catholic Radio as we continue to teach, evangelize, and defend our Catholic faith. Now go do impossible things with God. Talking about the things that matter most to you. Today's Catholic Women. Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris Magruder on the radio voice for Catholic Women Now. Iowa Catholic Radio.